In this video, we'll look at mixing solutions and precipitation. In particular, we'll see if when mixing two soluble solutions, whether we form an insoluble precipitate. The solution we'll look at is mixing aqueous potassium iodide with a solution of aqueous lead nitrate. We bring these two compounds together, we can imagine making new, a new mixture which is lead iodide as a insoluble compound plus potassium nitrate. Now if I just write this down with these compounds you can see that it's not quite balanced because I have too many nitrates over here and not enough on this side and I've got too many iodides here and not enough on the other side and so I need two potassium nitrates and two potassium iodides. So this is the full formula unit equation but we can also see that we've got some spectator ions which are the potassium and the nitrate and really what we're looking at is the process of Pb2 plus aqueous plus two iodides making lead to iodide. So this is our net ionic equation and what we'll want to look at then is what are the concentrations of lead and what are the concentrations of iodide. So now I'm going to imagine mixing these two solutions, a one liter of a 0.2 molar Ki solution with one liter of a 0.2 molar lead nitrate solution and that's going to give me my final solution on the right here which is now two liters. To determine concentration in the final volume, I need to know the number of moles of the species of interest. And so if I have a 0.2 molar solution of potassium iodide, that's 0.2 moles per liter times one liter is 0.2 moles of the compound potassium iodide. And I'm really interested in the I minus concentration, but I know for every one mole of Ki, I get one mole of I minus. So I have 0.2 moles of I minus. The same is true for the lead. I have 0.2 molar lead nitrate times one liter gives me 0.2 moles of the lead nitrate. And I also know that means I'm going to have 0.2 moles of the lead ions. I can now depict this in the solution. So say my potassium solution has a couple potassiums and a couple iodides. Obviously there's billions and billions and billions of them, but I'm just showing a few. And my lead solution has say, oh, 0.2 moles of lead. And then it's got some nitrates as well. Turns out the number of nitrates is double that. So I've got some nitrates floating around. Now when I mix the solution I have all the same ions. So I've got a potassium ion and a potassium ion and I've got an iodide and an iodide and I've got a lead and I've got a lead and then I've got these nitrates that are floating around. And now I want to think about the concentration in my final volume which is two liters. And in particular, I want to know what's the concentration of lead? And that's the number of moles of lead, 0.2 moles, divided by the volume, two liters, is 0.1 molar. And the concentration of I minus, that's the number of moles, 0.2 moles, divided by two liters, is also 0.1 molar. To figure out if the lead iodide precipitates, I need to look at my reaction again. So it's aqueous lead 2 ions plus 2 iodides make lead iodide solid. And I want to think about my ions in solution, and this time I'm just not going to draw any of the spectator ions. And so I've got lead 2 plus, and I've got I minus, and I've got an I minus, and I've got my lead 2 plus. And before we determined that the lead 2 plus concentration was equal to 0 0.1 molar, and the iodide concentration was equal to 0 0.1 molar. To know if a precipitate forms, I want to compare 
the solubility product or the ion product that I have now with the ion product at equilibrium. So the ion product now is QSP, which is the concentrations that I have instantaneously, and it's just the lead concentration times the iodide concentration squared. But now the values that I put in here is what I have now. And so what I have right now, QSP depends on the conditions. There's 0.1 molar lead, there's 0.1 molar iodide, and I square that and I get 10 to the minus 3 for QSP. So I can compare that to what I would have at equilibrium. So at equilibrium, I've got KSP equal to 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8. So if I look at equilibrium compared to now, I can see that right now the concentrations are much, much higher. So Q greater than K so to get to equilibrium, I've got to lower the concentrations. I'm going to lower the concentrations by forming an insoluble precipitate. And so in this case, I'll get precipitation. Another question we can ask is, how much precipitate do we form? And so to think about that, we have to think about what the concentrations are of the ions. And more importantly, how many moles are there of each? So I have 0.2 moles of the lead, and I have 0.2 moles of the iodide. Now I need to realize that the lead and the iodide don't react in a one-to-one -one basis. That is, I need two iodides for every lead. So this is a limiting reagent problem, and I can see that the iodide is the limiting reagent. That is, if I imagine that these are forming the precipitate, and falling out of solution, I have left over lead ions. And that's because I need two iodides for every lead, and, but instead I have the equal numbers of moles of lead and iodide. And so what I'll find is that all of this will turn into lead iodide. And so that means for every two moles of iodine, iodide, I make one lead iodide. And so I can make 0.1 moles solid PBI2. Now this assumes the reaction goes all the way to completion and that all of the I minus reacts and that's a reasonable assumption because in fact lead iodide is not very soluble and so we'll form as much solid as possible and that's the best thing to assume and if you want to know the iodide concentration after that you can then work back and see how much solid redissolves. So if I make 0.1 moles of solid, I can figure out how many grams that is because lead iodide has a formula mass of 461 grams per mole. And so what that means is that the total precipitate will be 46.1 grams of lead iodide. We can also ask what the concentrations are in the final solution after precipitation. To do that, we want to look at the number of moles that we have before the reaction and after. So previously we saw that we had 0.2 moles and 0.2 moles in 2 liters of solution. Now all of the iodide will react, and so after the reaction we're going to lose 0.2 moles of this, and we're going to lose 0.1 mole of this, and that's because we need twice as much iodide as lead, and we're going to gain 0.1 mole of this, which was our 46 grams. So after the reaction, we have essentially none of this. We have about 0.1 mole of this, and we have 0.1 mole of lead left over. That means my lead concentration, now I know, it's 0.1 moles divided by 2 liters, it's 0 0.05 molar. So from that I can figure out the iodide concentration, because I also know that Ksp is equal to the lead concentration and the iodide concentration squared. So I know KSP, 
I know the lead concentration, and I can find the iodide concentration. So if I just plug this in here, and I know this is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8 is equal to 0 0.05 times the iodide concentration squared, I can solve, and I find that the iodide concentration comes out to be equal to 5.3 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. So you can see now at equilibrium we have less of the iodide and again we also have lost our perfect relationship where the iodide concentration is exactly twice the lead concentration. And the reason is is the source of the lead and the source of the iodide was not all from lead iodide being put in solution. Instead, one came from lead nitrate, the other came from potassium iodide, and it depended on the concentration of those solutions what the final concentrations in the mixture was.